I'm really worried about uh, females self-excluding if we do have males identifying um, in their sports category. And um, I've actually, we, we already have this happening in New Zealand. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to name the athlete or anything, but I have looked up the stats and I have looked up all the results. Um, and I just wanted to sort of, you know, briefly mention exactly what this looks like when it's when it's happening. Um, so out of 10 races, 10 out of 10 races, um, a male identifying as a woman has won the female category. Um, overall, when overall, when you look at this, um, they've placed between 8th and 49th overall. Now the second place female has uh, been placing between 49th and 106th overall. Like there's a really, really clear distinction there. Um, and because this person ended up being the overall winner um, of the series event, um, they've also won cash $500 um, cash prize, which goes into the next series. Um, they won prize money at each event. And they got to stand on the top of the podium and receive accolade, which the female athletes didn't. I mean, it, they're already being displaced, and I'm really, really concerned about this long term, if it happens more frequently in other sports. Yeah, thanks, Candice. I, I think it's something um, we've certainly heard of and heard a lot about. Um, that fairness piece is one of the big big rocks to work through for each code moving forward. I, I don't disagree with that, and, and I don't think anyone on the call disagrees that there are some things to iron out as you get closer to that competitive, in particular when we start talking about cash, you know, we are talking then about that elite, towards the elite end of the pathway. So um, well, there's, there's cash is often in community events as well. Sure. I mean, yep. I've com competed my whole life. Um, there's small events, they offer it, you know, because the the entry fees to these races are expensive. It's five hundred dollars to enter a race. I mean, um, or an event for some events. So it can be around a hundred just for your standard normal event. Um, you know, there's a lot of time and resource that athletes are putting into themselves to develop at all levels and even community level. There's still significant amount of training, and that you know, females are putting in in our time. Um, it, yeah, I, I think there's real concern here. Yeah, I think self-exclusion for anyone is a concern. And so that would absolutely need to be taken into account moving forward for each, and, and I don't know, um, you know, whether it's triathlon or swimming you're talking about or something different, but it, each code sport needs to take that into account for sure. And and what we're hearing today is, is really helpful around how we might help support that. Yeah, yeah, and so, I, I just uh, also just uh, like a bit, Candice, so just to also reframe, like we've mentioned throughout this presentation, right, that competition is one element of community sport and it presents a set of its own challenges that we will have to work through. But community sport is a public good, right? So there has to be opportunity for inclusion for everybody in community sport. Notwithstanding that there are some areas that may need some mitigations applied, that there may be specific policy work that's needed to be undertaken to ensure inclusion for everybody, we still have to bear in mind that fundamentally, we need to make space for all of our people in community sport, all of our people. And that we won't be moving on. No, of course there has to be. I mean, there's no one is wanting to exclude anyone from sport. But in the same sense, as a female, I could never identify as a transgender woman. Because to be transgender, you, you have to have gone through a transition. You're a bio, your biology is not that of, you know, <laughs> your biology is the opposite to what you're identifying as. A definition of a transgender woman is, a, is male. I'm, I mean, just gonna, I'm gonna ask you just to stop there though, because here you're talking about a, a community that you're not a part of. And so if you want to express how you feel about transgender people, this is not the forum for that. No, I support transgender people when I'm just saying in sport, um, biology, um, our and bodies. I'm just, and I'm just saying that that conversation is out of scope of this. But it's all based on self-identity for inclusion and sport. The guidelines are all self-identity. And transgender people uh, come from a, a range of different experiences have transitioned at a range of different times. And I don't think that, that particular conversation is what this forum is for.
Um, but we still appreciate all the feedback that you've provided on the challenges for competition. We are very concerned, as Rebecca said, about inclusion for women and girls. It's an area, of, you know, it's an area of priority for us anyway. We invest in that space as well, and we will continue to do so. So it, it's something that we also care about, and we will be taking it into account. Um, so, yeah, we appreciate that feedback. But we just want to maintain a safe space as well for everybody that's in this room in the topics that we cover. Thank you, Candice. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Um, thanks, Mickey. Next question.